Ismail IV wakes up to find that his mind is now implanted in the body of a beautiful woman. His own body has been stolen, and he is reported to have died on a distant planet he has never visited. Hello and welcome to Liam's Lyceum. I'm your host Liam, aka Hembar, and today I'll be doing a spoiler-free review of Justin Lieber's Beyond Rejection. Beyond Rejection is a 1980 novel by Justin Lieber, who is the son of Fritz Lieber, of course. Uh, this is his debut novel, actually. It is sci-fi set in the 22nd century. It is first of a trilogy, though this works um, very well as a standalone. That trilogy is just kind of exploring certain philosophical themes that are all relatively connected. It's more of a functionalist idea. Um, humans have a chance of rebirth when they die in this future. Uh, taking tapes, essentially a certain person's mind program, they can transfer these to a conscious or this consciousness to a different body. Of course, uh, this is philosophical at its core, dealing with the mind-body problem. Can you be a brain in a jar? Uh, Liber himself was a philosopher, and uh, beyond a fantasy novel I've read by him, I've also read a dialogue on functionalism that he wrote. Uh, the book starts with a ghoul, a scientist preparing these new bodies, um, and there's thinking of Alan Turing and Noam Chomsky. Then we go to a vampire, the scientist in charge of transferring the minds to these bodies. Um, these positions are really called somat uh, somaticians and psychoticians, I think, uh, respectively. Ghoul and vampire are the colloquialisms. They very much sound like something his dad would write. Uh, there is a third... Um, doctor of sorts called a harmonizer which uses sensitivity and imagination with semantic talent to combine mind and body and there are people in suits to come to hear big and impressive words as a mindless body runs on a treadmill this body will have a mind uploaded to it tomorrow it's about 30 years old female fit but with an oddity on its backside a prehensile tail and the mind uploading into uh, that is ismail fourth a man who supposedly died in space uh, when he knows he'd never go to space, uh, he can't really handle it. And why is he in a female body that has a tail? Uh, one supposedly belonging to a woman named Sally Cadmus. Uh, Candy is her companion. Uh, we'll just refer to the Ismail Fourth in the Sally Cadmus body as her for, well, ease here. Uh, a character of about 10 or 11 is Candy, um, but has the mind of a person seven times that age. She is mysterious, and we know very little of her past. Uh, this obviously isn't her first body. Uh, this is also kind of an animal companion in this book, too. Uh, the story starts with this clever tour, giving the reader a nice intro to the world and, well, the going-ons of the future here, and then sets us up for what is going on. And it's actually really important. It's a uh, uh, it'll make a lot more sense with the ending, too. Uh, with moving bodies, there is still uh, mental um, senility, regardless of body age that comes on about age 100, with the exceptions of leapers, who could potentially gain a form of immortality, uh, but they are very rare, and you're not allowed to transfer a mind over the age of 85. Uh, the future has some interesting aspects. In the 1990s, the Bill of Rights was appealed, uh, and a big mess resulted. Uh, vegan leaf and marijuana are more popular to smoke than tobacco as well in the future. Uh, Francois Vaines is the first character we get a full introduction to. Uh, he likes his archaic things and nostalgia and does drugs in hazy rooms. Of course, he makes sure to get his lungs cleaned off. And uh, when Ismail Sally is truly introduced, uh, the story continues in first person. It's an interesting experience, a, a change of sex and how that, uh, well, obviously changes so much, everything, I guess. Uh, I guess it's hard sci-fi and a look at gender dysphoria, if that wasn't already obvious. We even have some animals intelligent enough to speak, like cats, for example. Again, it's going along with this functionalism idea. Uh, boats use sails, and airplane jet travel is illegal, and they have not... Uh, there's... Well, there's ways to get into space without using a great amount of fossil fuels, which would make sense in, you know, future scientific technology anyways. Uh, space travel by wormhole um, is the main, you know, way. Interstellar travel does exist, though. Uh, torture is archaic. Guns seem to be too. It's very optimistic sci-fi, the kind you stopped seeing around the time this was published, I would say. Uh, the title of rejection refers to the transferring of the mind of the body, uh, and this is with animals and potentially AI later on. Uh, really shows this as a functionist philosophical sci-fi work. Instead of rejecting a heart or another organ like today, there's a chance of rejecting this donated body, if you will. For Ismail, Sally, or whatever you want to call um, her, I guess, uh, it's a person, um, 
now in a female body, uh, right? And so now is has it's even more complicated because this body has a tail, which is just not normal for humans. So sexuality is definitely a theme. There is some awkward sex, like you'd read in Joe Abercrombie, maybe. Uh, there's rape as well. So um, there is a sense of killing yourself uh, in the Walter John Williams implied spaces sense. Uh, and look out for references to the Wizard of Oz, uh, the Greek myth of Cadmus, uh, and, well, other things. Uh, it's co like Moby Dick, for example. It, quite an ending, I'm sure, that will have mixed reactions, but I'm personally eager for, to read book two, and this was one of the most surprising reads of the year, honestly. I was very impressed that it's a debut, and just comes into the philosophy really well and has an entertaining story. doesn't have a lot of great reviews on sites like Goodreads, but... You know, that's okay. It's a great exploration of story and of narrative, and not just in a literary sense, but just in our own lives. The stories we tell ourselves, the narrative we make for ourselves, and how we can deal with changing that. And not just in a, well, like a transgender way, but also just, you know, I think anyone could really use it to explore themselves and how, really, how their identity works for them, basically. So I think Libra does a fantastic job exploring that. I'll catch you next time.